Hey folks, this is CEO speaking again. It's uh, 2 past 11 in the morning and uh, we're going to talk today about another amazing project which is reading the codes of our keyboard using a project with no software and no connection to the computer. So the state of the art is going to be this version here where we have a hexadecimal display. Hexadecimal meaning that on one digit only, if you take a look here again, any number bigger than 9, which is like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, they cannot be displayed on one digit only. So either you have a hexadecimal display like this, when you can read it exactly as is, the letter A, B, C, D, E, or F, or if you stick to the standard the seven segments, this is the symbol you're going to see on a normal seven segment display. So when you put a project on, is a double A showing here and both decimal points are lit. Here you have a earlier prototype when I'm using uh, seven segment displays. And as you can see, the two symbols there represent exactly this one over here, which is the 10, 10 represented by the letter A. So you have actually practically a double A. And if we go further here, I have a third one on the breadboard. This is the least reliable because of so many contacts which are not soldered. It won't last probably more than a couple of days. But this is the one we're going to check together. And it shows the same. A double A with both decimal points lit, okay? So what are going to be the codes? If I'm following this sheet where the codes are highlighted in green. As soon as I press the A, so let's say I'm gonna press the A, what am I going to read? One C, take a look here, is one C. If I press A for this one here, I press A on this one here, this is one C. But the C, take a look at the symbol here for C. We go here and we find it is A, B, and C. This is the C. And if I press it here, A, the letter A, take a look, A is one C again. So you start to become familiar with the reading. Now, easier if I press the B, I press the B here, it's going to be 32. Why 32? Take a look on the codes. Right here, B is 32, okay? Easy, we go on the uh, earlier version and you press B. Of course, you are going to read 32, okay? And if we go on our breadboard prototyping, we press B, of course, we're going to have 32, okay? If we pick up another example, let's say here to have letters again, I press the letter J, okay? So the letter J is right here. If I press it, I'm gonna have something like 3B. Why 3B? Because you go here on the list and you have for J, 3B. But B, take a look at the symbol for B, is like the low case for the letter C in a mirror, like this. This is the B. So you have to read 3B. If we go here on the earlier prototype and you press J, it's 3B. You see the little C in a mirror, 3B, okay? Remember 3B. And we go here, we press the J, and you have 3B, okay? If we pick up another one, okay, let's say we're going to pick the letter P. The letter P is right here. If I press it, P is 4D. Why 4D? Because I take a look here and P, you're gonna read it 4D, okay? Now I go here on the earlier prototype, I press the letter P, which is right here. It's 4D, okay? But D, if you take a look, D is going to be A, B, C, and D. This is like the five where is missing the segment on the right side, D, and is exactly this one here. And if you click here the letter P on the breadboard, it's exactly the same for D, okay? Let's say we're gonna pick up another one uh, where we're going to see, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the number two, 
one E. So here we pick up the two and you're going to see one E. What does it mean E? Is like the number six with the segment on the right side missing. Take a look. Right here, it's A, B, C, D, and E. This is the E, okay? So that symbol for E can be seen here. And if you press two on the breadboard, you are going to have one E, okay? So, it doesn't matter what codes you're going to get, uh, you have access to read the codes for all the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and no more than F because F is equivalent to 15. If I just pick up one more, let's say an easy one is going to be the letter I, so if I pick up the letter I from here, I'm gonna see 43. Why 43? Because I'm going here and I identify clearly in the middle, I is 43. So I pick up here the letter I and I'm gonna see 43, okay? And if I'm going here for the letter I, I'm going to clearly see 43 on our breadboard project. Okay, so if we just pick up, let's say, one more, one more is going to be the letter T. The letter T from here, I pick up the letter T, I'm going to read 2C. Why 2C? Because I'm going here, and for T in the middle, you're going to see 2C. Here, I'm going to press the letter T, I'm going to see to C, okay? What is this? Is A, B, and C. It's exactly to C. And here too, if I pick up the letter T, it's going to be to C. In other words, it doesn't matter what kind of version you have for the project, the most advanced, which is directly hexadecimal display, or if you solder using seven segment displays, or you just check the project if working as a prototype on a breadboard, the readings should be similar, excepting the seven segment displays are again not capable, not able to show numbers bigger than nine on one digit. So the manufacturer provided to us a special way to see these kind of letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, on a, segment, a seven segment display by using special symbols generated by the uh, decoder you connect between uh, the counter or the shift register, whatever you have, and the display itself, okay? I'm going to clearly describe the diagram of this one here because we're gonna be able to build it on a, uh, a breadboard. And also, I'm going to present you the diagram if you ever want to build this one, because the uh, hexadecimal displays are using for this one uh, the TI uh, digits, which are called TIL311, TIL311, okay? So, thank you very much for that. And uh, remember, this is a project to do what? To read the codes of the keyboard keys of our computers without having the keyboard connected to the computer and without using any software, just a hardware project. Thank you. Bye-bye.